Hey everybody, Alyssa here from Becoming Memories and popping in today for a quick layout using some mixed media. And I've kind of already been playing around here, which is why my desk is a mess and there are mists everywhere. But all I've done so far is I've basically covered a strip of my paper um, with gesso and dried it. And that is all I've done. And I did that before I got on camera mainly because I was using that time to brainstorm what I wanted to do. This is my photo here, and it's of my daughter when she got a, an art kit for her birthday um, two years ago. And so there was a challenge recently on the Secret Not Secret Kit Club, um, the monthly uh, scrapbook party. If you, if you are not familiar with the Secret Not Secret Kit Club, you can go to Redefined Creative and check dot com and check it out or search for the secret not secret kit club on Facebook um, it's a very cool kit club and every month we have secret members only scrapbook parties and one of the challenges this month is to do below art so this is something new to me and I've already played around with one of these and it was a disaster um, video has already been deleted so um, I'm not really sure where this is gonna go but I'm gonna give it a try. My plan is to do the blow art on the background and then to bring in, of course, my photo and also this cut file from Paige Evans, which I'm planning to back with some paper from the Horizon Collection. So um, we shall see. We'll give this another go. Hopefully this one does not end up in the trash can like the last one. And um, yeah. Here we go, I'm gonna put you on fast forward so you don't have to listen to all of this. My head will probably be in the camera uh, doing this and so I apologize in advance for that but I didn't have a longer straw. This is actually a, a kid's straw out of one of my kid's water bottles. So um, apologies for the back of my head in the screen but let's see what we can do here. So here we go. I'm going to try to show you mist colors here as I go. This one is called turquoise and it is a tattered angels spray. And I'm just dripping it right onto that gessoed area of my paper and then blowing it around with the straw. And I will be honest, I felt kind of silly doing this, but um, it did kind of, once I kind of figured out the technique um, and how to get it moving all over the page. It actually did end up looking pretty cool. So um, there's quite a bit of me just experimenting here, but I left it in because I figured sometimes it is interesting to just watch people's experiments and see what happens. And so I'm using that old dish towel there. Um, this is one I just use for cleaning. It's you know, not even white anymore. And so I just was dabbing off. Um, when I finished with one color, I would dab off kind of the excess that was left so that I didn't end up blowing it around into another color. So somewhere around this point, I figured out that if I took the straw and just like moved it around like crazy while I was blowing into it, it kind of created a super cool like swirly effect and really helped like that original blob of mist spread out. So I started kind of doing that. This one here is a uh, coral, coral I believe is the color from Heidi Swap. And this ended up being a little more pinky than I was going for with this, but it's okay. The Horizon Collection, which is what I end up putting on top of this um, from Paige Evans is gorgeous and it has about every color uh, imaginable and so it actually made it pretty easy to choose mist colors because I wasn't really worried about them mixing with that paper I think you could put just about any mixed media color in the background and still have it work with the horizon collection so that was pretty cool you see I stopped there for a minute and did a little drying I probably didn't do enough drying because when I started adding more colors they did start mixing a little bit but you know <laughs> And this is where I put that color on. I put it and it was brown and I immediately dabbed as much of it off as I could because I was didn't want brown um, on this layout. The the um, sticker 
like the sample sticker on the bottle looked more golden brown but on the paper it was definitely brown so you know those things happen <laughs> I just got rid of it and moved on and actually the end product you don't see it at all so it was no big deal this color here is called sunrise I think this is a Diane Reevely um, mist and this is about the point where I started to like this. It took me a little while to kind of see it come together and decide that I liked how it was looking. Um, and this is that point. And I really think that you could probably achieve something pretty similar just by dripping the mist onto the paper and then tapping it around in different directions. But uh, it was fun to try something new and experiment a little bit. So here I am drying, drying, drying. <laughs> because I'm so impatient. Okay, so I decide for now that I'm done with the background and it is time to move on. So here I am now flipping through the Horizon collection to try and figure out what papers I want to use. I have the project pad here that I got from Joann's and I thought I'd start with some solids to map my photo. And here I'm looking actually for a darker pink. I could swear that there was a darker solid color pink in the um, paper pad, but I've either apparently used it or there never was one, and I am just imagining it, <laughs> which is entirely possible because sometimes that happens. Um, and I probably actually have that same darker pink in the Whimsical collection, I think, but I just didn't feel like getting up to get it. Please tell me I'm not the only one that sometimes doesn't use things just because you don't feel like getting up to get it. Um, and here I'm just trying to figure out what order I want these mats in and I decide that that yellow is just not happening for me so I pull it out. Going through again, what to use, what to use. I'm still looking for that. <laughs> I'm still looking for that dark pink. Um, there's a branding strip there on one of the papers that's a dark pink and that was the color that I thought I had in a full sheet. But I decided just to go with this lighter pink. My daughter loves color. She loves art. And this layout is about her birthday and that art box that she got for her birthday. And so I thought pink would be great. I ended up just using the lighter pink, which works fine in the end. You know, sometimes you just go with what you got. So I have decided here I'm going to quadruple matte my photo. I never really do that. Um, but it felt like with all of that crazy art on the background and then my plans to put yet another crazy pattern with, um, when I backed the cut file, I felt like I really had to do something bold to make sure that that photo got noticed in this layout. So I did pink, then green, then orange, and now I'm doing this quilt pattern, which is probably one of my favorite patterns from the Horizon Collection. Um, as the fourth mat. So that really helped make that one four by six photo feel super substantial. So now I'm just bringing it back on the background. I decide, yes, indeed, I really like that. And now I'm bringing back this cut file. And by the magic of television, it is now backed. So I, I'll be really honest with you. I messed up a couple of times when I was backing this cut file and I, um, miscut a few pieces and in the end of it I was just like I knew I was going to cut the cut file apart and so I just hid the pieces that I cut wrong underneath my photo and moved on. I could have recut the cut file um, or recut the pieces that I was backing it with but you know sometimes you just got to go with it. So here's something I decided to give this a try for a title um, this sticker that says grateful and the stickers in the, um, uh, paper pad, the, oh my goodness, I can't even think of this, the pad where the, where the stickers and the cardstock come all together. Project pad, there we go. Um, the project pad stickers are much thinner than cardstock weight and so I was having some trouble getting it out and so this is one of my favorite tips. I take this, um, little tool. This is actually like a rub-on tool, an old uh, Making Memories one from like 
years and years ago. I love these things. I use them for all kinds of things. And, um, but you can do it with a pen or a pencil as well. And I just kind of like roll it underneath the edge of the sticker while I'm pulling up so that you can pull the whole sticker up at once rather than when you're using your fingers, you can only pull on, uh, you know, two or three points at a time. And when you roll that, um, tool under there and stick the sticker to the tool it lets you kind of pull more evenly and you have less chance of tearing I hope that made sense um so I stick this word grateful on this green card stock and there's another use for that little rub-on tool I just use that to make sure that all of the sticker was evenly stuck down and I'm thinking about fussy cutting it out but once I stick it on there I realize even with a green border around that sticker it's too busy for what I'm trying to do here. So I set that aside to use on another layout and I probably will go back and fussy cut that word out with a green border because I think it would be really cool. So here I'm just trying to decide where my title is going to go. Most of the time I feel like title placement kind of is obvious and it just sort of jumps out at me but in this case I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. So I decided to put it there at the bottom of the photo and I'm going to use these gorgeous rose gold sticker letters from the project pad. And I made the mistake of pulling off the A first for the word art. So again, I'm using that little rub on tool. I just stuck the bottom end of the letter A on that rub on tool so that it didn't totally stick to a surface and be hard to pull off. And now I'm bringing in the thickers. I think these are from the Pick Me Up collection by Paige Evans. Um, probably one of my favorite thickers of all time. I have several packs of them. And I was looking to see there if I wanted to use the blue or the white. And I decided to go with the white for the word thankful. My title is going to be thankful for art. Uh, which is kind of a play on words because... My daughter definitely is thankful for art. She loves art. It's her creative escape. It's her her downtime. She just is constantly coloring, drawing, um, painting. And, you know, I totally get that because my creative outlet is scrapbooking. And so hers is also art, but just a little bit different form. But then also, you know, the play on words being that she's also thankful for the beautiful art set she got for her birthday from her uncle. And... Um, I do write in a little bit about this in the journaling, um, but the uncle that gave it to her, that actually is my uncle, and he passed away about a year after this birthday, and so that ended up being the last birthday present that she got from Uncle Joe, and so um, just made it a little bit extra special. So now I'm just sticking down my cut files underneath my photo I I'm taking the little I fussy cut those little butterflies out of another one of the pattern papers from the horizon collection I believe that one is also in the project pad and now I'm using my ruler just to check and make sure my photo is straight and it's not so I'm glad I checked one of the problems with a very artsy free-flowing layout like this is there isn't a lot of structure and it can be hard, at least for me, it can be kind of hard to tell if my photo is straight and so I like to pull in my ruler just to make sure. So I'm sticking those butterflies around the page and here's where I decide I'm going to add my journaling up here at the top of the page. And um, if you've been watching me very long, you know that most of my albums are 12 by 12 on one side with a pocket page on the opposite side. And I tend to add more journaling as well as additional supporting photos on the opposite page. So more of that story about Uncle Joe will be on the um, pocket page side. Um, I didn't, I just put a very brief summary up there, but I will expand on the story on the other side. So all that's left now is a sprinkling of enamel dots and just finding some colors here that go with the Horizon collection. Sadly, when I went to Joann's to get my Horizon paper, they did not have any enamel dots. <clears throat> so these are ones that I got from eBay, it came from China on the slow boat, but I bought a whole bunch of them and I love them. So 
that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some close-ups. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up or subscribe for more videos and I will see you soon.